Hi guys, my name is Lizzie Lee and I am a fourth year medical student at a Caribbean medical school. Um, if you don't know me from my Instagram at Lizzie Lee Med, go ahead and follow me there. Um, so like I said, I am from a Caribbean medical school and a lot of you guys have requested that I um, talk about my experience there. A lot of you guys have had a lot of questions um, so I felt like it was long overdue to do a video about it. Uh, disclaimer is this is specific to my experience, my opinions, and my Caribbean medical school that I went to. So not all medical schools are set up the same and that applies in the Caribbean as well. The medical school that I attended was called American University of Antigua. And if you watched my last video, you would know why I went there, but um, let's just say I didn't do so hot in the MCAT, right? So if you're in this position like me, or like I was, um, where your application isn't complete, um, either your GPA is not okay, your MCAT score is bad, maybe not enough shadowing experience or whatnot, uh, you're in the situation where you're either applying Caribbean, thinking about applying Caribbean, or have already gotten accepted into Caribbean. And you're watching this video as maybe um, some insight into it. So hopefully today I can answer some of your questions, but I wanna first start off by saying that you are a rock star, okay? Um, applying Caribbean does not make you lesser than. Just because you failed something or just because something you got rejected from something doesn't make you lesser than. You are a rock star. You got rejected, you failed something, and you got back up and you found a way to make your dreams come true, okay? So that's how I feel about going to Caribbean Medical School. Um, one of the questions that I did get on my Instagram was, do you have any pros for Caribbean Medical School? And let me say my pro for going to Caribbean Medical School is it is another shot at your dream, okay? So you are not lesser than, you are not worthless, you are not a failure, you are a fighter and you're gonna get back up and you're gonna do what you need to do because guess what? At the end of the journey, you're gonna become a doctor. So it doesn't matter how you get there, you got there, all right? So let me go ahead and start with reading some of these uh, messages and Q and A's that you guys were asking me. Are the match rates at Caribbean schools really not as competitive as the US ones? Yes, it is true. Um, I literally just looked it up for this last year, 2019. The match rates for a US IMG is around 59% and a non-US IMG was 58.6, I believe. If I am a US citizen, I'm considered a US IMG. And if I'm like not US citizen, I'm considered a non-US IMG. Makes sense? And yes, the match rates are lower, but completely doable. I had a bunch of my friends just match this past cycle that went to my school and all was well. And to be honest, if you don't match, guess what What I say? We're fighters. We got this. We're just going to apply again and we're going to take a gap year, do research, do whatever we need to do to get to that end goal. All right. Next question. Is the failure rate actually that high? So this is me pulling from my own experience at my school in my program. Um, my original class had 400 students in it. Um, at the end of it, I believe a hundred of us remained. And yes, that does sound very scary, right? A lot of the students like failed out, but what did I say about us? We're freaking fighters. So technically not all of us failed out, but the people who didn't pass that semester joined the lower class. Does that make sense? So technically, yes, the, the failure rate is high because I did know a lot of people that failed out, but it's also, it's also due to a specific person's drive, their motivation, their, uh, like, do they want to be there? A lot of my classmates, um, some of them didn't even want to be there, you know? So it all depends on that. Don't get scared by the statistics because uh, you are more than a statistic. You got this. Cost, it's expensive, okay? It's, um, I think it's the same, if not more than US schools. Don't quote me on that. Go look up the prices yourself. But just know right now, I think I owe like $382,000 in debt just from med school, not from undergrad, just med school. Um, I think each semester, it's like 
40 something thousand that I take out. So each year is 80 some, let's just say 80. And then four years, what's 40 times that? 320. And then there's like different semesters that you can, that I had to do like extra semesters that I took out money for too. It's just a lot of math. I, don't, I can't. Um, all right. The next thing is experience. Okay. So one thing with me is that I actually enjoyed my experience. Um, for the most part, I think anywhere you are, even at a U.S. med school, anywhere you are, you're going to have hardships, right? Um, there's going to be a class that you hate. There's going to be a professor that didn't teach you that well or like you didn't like their teaching or whatever. Um, you're going to complain. You're going to say, this school sucks, da 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 But at the end of it, when I'm looking back on it, um, I have to say... I don't regret it. And that's one thing that people ask me and I ask my friends too. I say, if you could do it over, would you do it again? Some people say no. You know, I've had friends say no, but for me specifically, I think I had to do what I had to do. Um, I didn't get accepted into 50 medical schools that I applied to in the US. Um, it got to the point where I didn't know what else to do. Caribbean school took me in like they're, like orphan child. So I'm thankful. I'm 100% thankful for them. Um, the experience more so is rough. It's very hard with island life adjustments, which is another question. So island life, when I was there, it was less developed than it is now because I know um, they're building like new apartment complexes and like the roads are getting better and stuff like that. But when I first went there, the roads were dirt. Um, the airport that I flew into was like a little shack. Um, now there's a huge airport there. Um, but one thing I will say specific to Antigua, my island, is that on Sundays, the island is closed. Like, we didn't know that. I flew in with my friend because we both got accepted. We flew in on a Sunday. And we're like, oh yeah, fly in on a Sunday. We have all day to recuperate. And then Monday we start, right? No idea to me that this island is closed on Sunday. It's like their rest day. So we get there and we're in the hotel room and um, we're like, we're hungry. And then the hotel guy is like, oh, I just wanna let you know everything's closed on Sundays. And we're like, what? So so um, the only thing that's open on Sundays is like Chinese food because Asian people never close um, and the big supermarket. So where we were staying, there was like Chinese food place open and it was like, a block down the road or a mile or so and thankfully the guy that I was with is a guy so he wasn't scared to walk the streets of an island but I just got I'm a girl I honestly if I was by myself I would have starved but <laughs> we ended up walking to the Chinese food and we got it and we came back and then me and him were just looking at each other like what is this this is so different from the United States and we're like what did we get ourselves into but you get used to it uh <laughs> So adjustment on the island, it's also, um, one thing I will say is that it's very expensive. Really, really expensive. Like each week I would take trips to the grocery store and I would spend like $200 at a time. Because if you think about it, you're on an island. So everything that they sell has to get imported in. So I just remember specifically the price of peanut butter, okay? This little tub of Jiffy peanut butter was $7. And I was just like, I don't remember how much this is in the United States, but $7 is expensive, no? So I went um, to Walmart after I got back for one of my breaks and stuff. I saw the peanut butter and it was like $2. And I was like, what? That's crazy. How cheap is like stuff in America? It's just because like on the island, everything has to get imported in. So if you want Briar's ice cream, you're paying $15 for it but it's, it's expensive. So cost of living is very expensive on the island. Um, my rent for my apartment was a thousand ish a month, a thousand two hundred, something like that. And then a car rental. So there is bus transportation that is $400 a semester. I'm not sure if that's changed, but, um, the more you get comfortable with the island, like the more longer you've been there and stuff, you kind of want freedom to go to the grocery store and stuff. So you rent a car and car rentals are average around like $400, $500 a month. So it's pretty pricey. Okay, I like babbled on for that for a while. Recreation. So what do you do for fun on an island? So my island specifically, there was 365 beaches. That's what they advertise, right? 
but I've probably been to like five. Um, but I will say the beaches are so freaking beautiful, even though I got to see them like five times because we would only go like after we finished an exam or something. Um, honestly, I really do miss the island. Uh, I would go back on vacation. I think I would just just to see the beautiful beaches again. A lot of people, there's a lot of school activities and stuff. There was like yoga, there was fit club where it's like you just get together and exercise. Um, obviously there's all those other clubs and stuff. I actually joined a medical fraternity. It was called Phi D, uh, Phi Delta Epsilon. And um, it's a huge, a huge fraternity for all US med schools too. So I feel like that was a good networking tool um, if you wanna do that. Somebody said best school. I am not sure. I am not sure which is the best Caribbean medical school, but there is the top five and you could Google that. All right, let me go on to the next because this is a lot. All right, so another question I got was, have you ever felt judged from the medical community for attending a Caribbean school? And the answer to that is surprisingly no. Like absolutely none. Um. I've been rotating at various hospitals in America because that's what happens. Maybe I should talk about like the curriculum, how it's set up a little bit. You do two years on the island and then two years in America. That's just what it is, okay? And the two years on the island is didactic learning where you're learning from like presentation from your lectures and books and all that stuff. And then you take your step one and then you go to America to do your clinical rotations and that's when you take step two CS and CK and residency. That's the timeline. Um, but I've done two years of clinical rotations already. Um, I'm coming up like, I'm like too much shy of two years. And I've never ever been judged for being Caribbean medical student. Um, every time that I've mentioned it to kind of just say in conversation, like they're like, hey, what school did you go to or whatever? And I say, oh, I went to AUA, it's in the Caribbean, whatever. And the feedback that I've gotten from all my doctors that I've said that to have been, Oh yeah, I have a friend that went there or oh yeah, I there's there's this doctor on this floor and he's a Caribbean doctor. He's brilliant or she's from this school and she's our chief. Or, I don't know. Like it's been all positive vibes, which is surprising to me because when you're applying there's such a stigma against it. Like when you're applying for residency, not many people are accepting IMGs as they would US and DO students. But when you're in the floors, like you're in the wards, nobody cares. Like they really don't care. And I doubt, I doubt that if you're in the emergency room because you got your leg chopped off or, you know, something's wrong with you, I doubt you're going to look at your doctor's name badge and see so-and-so MD. And I doubt you're going to be like, did you go to a Caribbean medical school or a United States one? Don't think so. They're gonna be your doctor no matter what. So take that into consideration. Um, <laughs> somebody asked, is it something that you would recommend doing? And this I feel like is a double-edged sword. Um, I think if your application is good and you're able to go to US schools, do it, shoot your shot, apply. And if you have time or you have the resources to either retake your MCAT or do a post -boc or do some research or do something to increase your chances of getting accepted into US med school, I say do that too. I personally, my own opinion, think Caribbean medical schools are great alternative and you didn't get accepted into US schools and you're choosing Caribbean. But I can't say that for everybody because some of my classmates specifically only applied Caribbean, which I don't know why, but to each his own. I just remember when I was um, at the, I guess it's, I was at the presentation or whatever for my school, my dean, my dean for my school even said, you wouldn't be here if you got accepted into US schools. And if you got accepted into US schools, go to US schools. That's what he told me. That's just what happened. So um, that's my take on it. Uh, is it different from American medical schools? So there are certain medical schools that are, um, set up in a US style, mine was, it was set up like two semesters per year. Um, but some current medical schools are trimesters where there's three semesters per year. Okay, so this is this is the question too, people are confused. 
is, is it in English and what are the entry requirements? So when I was researching medical schools as well, I know that there were some in Puerto Rico and stuff. And some of those, like they have either um, Spanish classes where you can take Spanish to kind of like build up your uh, language repertoire. But my school is completely in English. It was an English speaking school. The professor spoke English to us, so it was fine. There was no language barriers in that. And um, how does it work? Do you get a medical license just to practice in the Caribbean? No, this is something that somebody asked me as well. So I think that I need to address it. So when you're going to recruit medical school, you can come back to the United States to practice. Like, yes, you can. But if you wanted to stay there, you could do that too. But um, I am a Caribbean medical student who went to school in the Caribbean, but I am currently doing my rotations in America and I want to match in America. So that is important. <laughs> uh, okay, somebody asked, did I have to take a semester off to take less credits in order to study for boards or does your school prep you well enough that you don't need to do that? So no, um, my school is set up in a way where there is four semesters and that's supposedly your two years, right? Because two semesters per year, but the caveat is at the end of fourth semester, you have to take this exam called COMP. COMP is a comprehensive NBME. NBME is from the National Board of Med Medical Education. And um, they have like these old exams that they cumul accumulate all these like old questions and like you take the practice for it just to know if just to see where you stand basically. So my school makes us take comp and I'm pretty sure other medical schools in the Caribbean make you do this as well because I have friends that go to different schools. So you take comp and you have to pass it with a certain score in order to sit for your step one. So the way my school is set up is if you pass that exam, you get to go ahead and go home and you get two months to study for your step one. So they, they give you that time frame to study. Um, but if you don't pass that exam, you have to do med five and med five, um, is a course. It's a semester where you do a Kaplan course, um, a Becker course, or one of those like cumulative courses where you learn like everything in a span of like a couple months. So they kind of like prep you for this comp and for your step that you're going to about to take. Right? So. If you pass that med five, then you get to take step. The only issue with having this set up this way is that it pushes you back. Um, instead of being done in two years for didactic portion, you're now done in two and a half. And the way the residency cycle is set up, it pushes you back to the next cycle of match, if that makes sense. Like, all right, I think that pretty much does it for this video. I'm sorry about how long it is. I talk too much and I ramble sometimes, but if this video didn't answer some of your questions, go ahead and comment them down below and I'll try to like answer them individually or DM me on Instagram. And um, maybe if I get enough questions that I didn't answer, I'll just do another video on it. But you know, let me know if this was helpful, if it wasn't helpful. Um, I'm just a girl sitting in front of her tripod and her iPhone recording videos about my experiences and like, I don't know if it's helpful or not. Just let me know. Uh, yeah. So good luck on whatever you're doing. And remember you're a rock star. If you fail, you get back up. We don't take no for an answer because we're not those kind of people. Okay. Bye.